every year we've been trying to do at least some sort of demonstration planting in the garden. This year what we're going to try and do is put out a plot with several different types of mulches and we're going to put peppers planted in all of them. Now we have six treatments and we'll be talking about each one individually later. We've talked about mulches and the benefits of mulches many times in the past. The biggest advantages of mulches is that they conserve moisture because they keep the water from evaporating from the soil and also the other function of a mulch is to cover the soil and keep light from the soil and keep weed growth down to keep the weed seeds from germinating and even if they do germinate by keeping the light away from it they can't grow and they can't reproduce and they can't compete with the plants. So generally you get better growth from your plants if you can put down some kind of mulch and it will also cut down on your watering costs. The first one that we're going to look at is black plastic. This has been available for many years. It's widely used in commercial vegetable production and widely used in home gardens for many reasons. Especially in the early season, like we're in now when the soil is still a little bit cold, black plastic works very well. Because it's dark, it absorbs the heat and it warms the soil up earlier. Now with black plastic, if you want to try and get a jump on your early, on your warm season crops, put your black plastic out about two weeks before you want to plant and leave it down and that will help warm up the soil. If you try and plant your warm season crops in soil that's too cold, the roots just simply don't grow well. The plants sit and they become stunted and don't grow well and won't produce and you won't get much advantage over having just waited a while and planted them at the normal time. But by using a dark mulch, getting that soil warm, you can get a definite early advantage with your warm season crops. One disadvantage of a black plastic mulch is that it's, it's not porous. Water, as it rains, runs off on the edges and can't get down into the roots. So if you use black plastic, make certain before you lay it down to put your irrigation line underneath it. Now these three mulches in a row here that all applies to. That's why we've put them together. We've run an irrigation line underneath the full length of the row. Once your black plastic is down, cover the edges, usually with soil to keep the wind from whipping it around and tearing it up. Now that can be quite a bit of a problem in Oklahoma, uh, especially when you're trying to lay it down. Either pick a day that isn't windy or try and get some help. The next mulch that we've got is a, a paper product. One other problem with black plastic mulch is that at the end of the season you have a disposal problem. The black plastic does not break down. You'll need to take it up and throw it away. You can't leave it in the garden. Most of what you'll find available for black plastics do not break down. A paper mulch such as this on the other hand it is paper and it will decompose. So it can be either put in the compost pile or tilled under into the soil at the end of the season. The problem with paper mulch is it is relatively easy to tear. You have to handle it carefully. This particular roll is only a little over two feet wide. To cover our little raised bed here, we have taped two pieces together in order to give ourselves the full width. Again, we've held down the edges with soil in order to keep the edges down. We've held it down in between the, the mulch treatments with bricks. You want to make certain that the wind cannot get underneath the edge of it and pull it up. As soon as it can get an edge pulled up, you've lost it. It'll blow away in a high wind, so be careful. One other good mulching material, a paper material that most of you have, is newspaper. Now, there has been concern in the past and there have been articles in the press about not using colored pages of newspaper as mulch. It's since been shown that the levels of any sort of heavy metals that might be in the inks is negligible. So it's okay, don't worry about using colored pages, colored inks from the newspaper. It won't harm anything. You do want to use enough layers of newspaper so that it will exclude all light. If you're unsure how many layers to use, just hold it up to strong light, to sunlight, and 
see if you can see through it. At least three sheets of newspaper, five or six are preferable. Now the problem with newspaper is that it will blow around very easily. What I've done very successfully in the past and what we've done here is lay the newspapers down, overlapping them so that there's no gaps, and then we've put reme over the top of it, soil over the edges of that to hold the newspaper down in place. Now reme is usually used as an early season extender, to, as a miniature greenhouse to put over plants. But we can use it, in this case, it's just a simple structure to hold it down. And all of these treatments, the black plastic, the paper, and the newspaper, to plant the peppers later, we'll come through, put some holes, small holes in the top, and put the plant down through. Now on the other side, we have a few other treatments that we're going to be looking at. One of them is the old standby, and that's straw. Now the treatments that are on this side are all fairly porous, and so we've not put a drip irrigation line down. With straw, the nice thing about it is that when you're through with it at the end of the season, you can just rototill it into your soil or move it aside into your permanent walkway and have a place to walk when it gets wet and you're trying to work your ground for fall planting. With straw, you need to be careful about a few things. You can carry some weed seeds into the garden that may be undesirable. And the straw layer that we have here is about three inches thick. You want it very thick to block out the light and prevent any weed growth. If you get a few weeds sprouting from within the straw itself, they'll be real easy to pick out. The nice thing about straw is it is a good insulating layer. It will keep the soil nice and cool throughout the summertime. It does tend to blow and we've taken just chunks of straw from a bale that was broken apart. An individual chunk like this, you could lay them down side by side, but make sure you rough up the edges and sort of weave them together a little bit so they will be less likely to blow around. Now planting into straw is also very easy. You just part an area of it and put your plants in there. Keep in mind that you want to make sure your soil is already warmed up before you put it down because it will keep it cold and if you're trying to get, a, get out an early planting of peppers, it may be too cool for them to grow well. So you might want to wait a little later before putting that on. One last tip on straw is that if you're buying it, try to buy what is called clean wheat straw. That'll have as little chance as possible of bringing strange weed seeds into your garden. Some of the prairie haze could bring in some unwanted noxious weed seeds, so be careful about that. Our next treatment is what you might call a control. It's just plain old bare soil. And in a raised bed like this, one problem with it is that the rain falling down, if we get a real gully washer in the middle of summer, could erode this away. Weeds, of course, are going to be a problem. We'll have to hoe it. It will warm up quite quickly because it is bare soil. Now, something you might be wondering about with all these mulch studies is how are we going to fertilize these during the summer? On the porous mulches, you could, of course, mix up a soluble fertilizer and pour it through. With ones like these, it'd probably be a good idea to make sure you incorporate a complete fertilizer ahead of time according to your soil test so that you won't have to be applying too much through the summer. Now our last part of the trial is a porous mulch that is fairly new in the gardening market. It's called landscape fabric. And there are various different types. Some are actual black plastic fibers that are woven together in a fabric. This one is made by the same folks who make Rime. And it is a spun polyester, but it's a much heavier weight than Rime. And its original purpose was to put down on roadways before they put the paving on to block weeds from coming up through the asphalt. Well, they found that it was also good for the gardening industry. And so it is sold now in small quantities. This is a 150 square foot roll. Usually sells for around $12. And you can use it in gardens, such as a situation like this, one thing you want to be careful about though is that even though it is porous on a rounded surface like this, the water will tend to roll off. And so once we get our peppers planted in here, we'll probably dish it down some to help it catch water so it can more easily soak through. But it does keep weeds from coming through. The nice thing about this versus black plastic is that it is breathable. Air can get through there. You won't have molds and mosses growing under there. Water can get through. 
hopefully not very weeds, not very many weeds can come up through it. And one thing that the manufacturers caution us about in these landscape fabrics is that they do tend to break down from the ultraviolet rays of the sun. It's recommended on permanent plantings, for instance, around shrubbery in the landscape, that as soon as you install the fabric around the plants, that you put down a mulch on top of it, such as pine bark nuggets or what have you. Well, since we're just using it here to grow peppers for one season, we're going to leave it without mulch and just see how it stands by itself, see how long it takes for it to break down in the sun. Now, with any of these mulches, think about it beforehand before you put them in. Again, if it's a non-porous type mulch like these, get your irrigation in there ahead of time. Think about the heat that's going into the soil. As Jim mentioned, black plastic heats it up real fast, but come midsummer, you might want to put an organic mulch on top of that to keep the soil cool through the summer, especially if you don't first have a big plant canopy there to shade it and keep it cool, because that soil temperature can really climb up long about the middle of June.